Hi, I'm Sharon Urock. I teach at Dunwoody College of Technology in the Computer Networking Department. And today we're going to talk about the FAT file system and we'll be using FAT12 as our example to look at. We had just finished talking about some of the boot sector that's on a FAT12 um, partition that's been formatted FAT12. And now we are going to continue on with sectors per track. We had just finished with the number of sectors that make up um, a file allocation table. The next two bytes over will be the number of sectors per track when we did the low level format of this disk. Remember this disk geometry is 80 tracks per side, each track divided into 18 sectors. Well, according to the value we have here on the boot sector, we have in hex 1200, zero, zero, reverse the bytes 0012. Zero, zero, one, hex 12 sectors per track, 12 in hex is equal to 18 in decimal. The next two bytes over are the number of heads. 0200, zero, 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 reverse the bytes 0002. Zero, zero, we have two heads. We only have one platter in a floppy disk, two sides. That would be correct. The next four bytes over, all zeros. Um, this next field isn't really relevant to a floppy disk. What this is is the number of hidden sectors. And since a floppy disk can't be formatted, there aren't going to be any sectors that come before the boot sector. So it's going to be zero because there are none. The next four bytes over, zeros again. Previously, two bytes somewhere back here, the number of um, sectors at offset number 1, 3. The number of sectors, since it was a small enough number to fit into two bytes, that value was stored in this field. If the number of sectors needed to be large enough that it wouldn't fit in two bytes, that value would have been right here, and then this value would have been 0. But in that case, this value is 0. The physical drive number. The physical drive number is relevant only if this is a boot disk. So there's only going to be one of two different physical drive numbers. Zero if it's a bootable floppy, or eight zero if it's a bootable hard, if it's a partition on a hard drive. This is a floppy, so the value of this next byte is going to be zero. The next byte over is not used by FAT at all. It's listed as reserved. Um, it's, the field name is current head, but it's not used. So it's a zero. And then the next one byte over is the extended boot signature re record that's just, it's like a serial number that's created by the format system. Um, see, it's got to be a 28 or 29 if it's going to be recognized by Windows NT. It happens to be a 29. The next four bytes over, the 32-bit volume ID assigned by format, this one is like a serial number. It's going to be, if I would reformat this disk, I'd get a different four-byte value. The next 11 bytes, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I can see I've padded this with four spaces there. That's where the volume label would go, but it now goes in the root directory table. So instead, ASCII no name goes in that spot. We'll find the volume label that we used when we formatted this disk in the root directory table. And then the next eight bytes over, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, the remainder of the INI information is in ASCII. Uh, to what type of file system was this formatted? And then we are left with the bootstrap code. That was the first sector of the disk that was created in the high level format of the formatting process. There's also the two file allocation tables, which we won't look at um, today. And then following the two file allocation tables is the root directory table. I will erase this information here. Go back and let's briefly look at what we've got on this disk. Quit out of debug. 
Um, use the DOS, DOS's DIR command on the root of A. And we can see here, if I pull this up, that when I type DIR, I can see the volume label. It must be in the root directory table if I look at the directory on the root of A and I see that information. I also see a volume serial number. And I, after the format, created two files. I'm going to look at the directory table that's holding this information. I can see that I have three entries in the directory table. One for the volume label, one for the file name 1.txt, and one for the file name 2.txt. When I look at the directory table, I'll look at the entry for 1.txt and decipher that information. So I'm going to want to remember a few things about it. I'm going to want to remember the name. It's 1.txt. File name is 1. Extension is text. I'm going to want to remember the size. This is the size in decimal, 24 bytes. I'm going to write it down here so that I don't forget, or over here. It's just for my notes, so I'm going to write it over here. I'm going to re want to remember what day. The date we see here and the time we see here is actually the last time it was modified. But when I created it, I never touched it. So it's also the creation date and time and the access date that's there. So, but the field we'll be looking at is the modification date and time. This was created August 23rd, the year, or it's modified and created August 23rd, the year 2010. And one dot text created and last modified in the afternoon, 2-12. It'll be stored in military time, so I'll want to know what that is in military time. That would be 1412 in military time. Now let's actually look at the root directory table in debug. So we're opening up debug again. I'm going to use the load command to load some sectors from drive A into memory and again at offset zero. L for load. Where do I want to load? I want to load into offset zero. From what drive do I want to load? Drive number zero because it's drive A. What starting sector do I want to load? The root directory table starts at sector number in hex, and I've got to specify it in hex, not decimal, 1, 3. How many sectors do I want to bring over? I'm only going to look at one of them. Um, there's 14 total sectors that make up the root directory table, but, um, oh, I'll bring all 14 in, but I'm not going to put 1, 4 here in the debug command. I'm going to put what the hex value is for 1, 4, and that's E. Well, 0, 0, 1, 3, E is going to load into offset 0 the root directory table from the floppy disk. Now I'm going to dump the first 128 bytes from memory onto the screen. And here I can see, if you look over here, at where debug attempts to um, convert to ASCII, you can kind of see the three different entries. One entry for the volume label, one entry for the file name 1.txt, and one entry for the file name 2.txt. Entries in a, a FAT directory table are 32 bytes per entry. In theory, then, we could say that each entry holds one file, as it does in this case. But if you use long file names, file names that are larger than eight characters per name, each file then is going to take up more than one entry. But we won't look at that today. We'll just look at an individual entry for the file name 1.txt. Keeping in mind, again, that each entry is 32 bytes. If in debug, debug shows on a line 16 bytes, Two lines would be 32 bytes. So I'm going to separate. I'm going to put boundaries on every 32 byte, mainly just so I can segregate 
the 32 bytes that make up the entry for file one.txt. 32 bytes, what do these 32 bytes mean? This is all of the information that's needed so that when I type dir, I can see the name of the file, the size in bytes, when it was modified and created, and a few other things that I don't see up there. Looking at the chart, you also have a chart in your packet that describes what is in the root directory table. You'll see from your chart that the first eight bytes of the entry are the file name, not including the extension. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember the file name is one, a three character file name. We get eight characters, but it only used three. ASCII O, ASCII N, ASCII E. Space, 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 space. Sorry about that, one more space. All eight bytes are gonna be used up in the root directory table or any directory table, whether we need them or not. It'll just pad them with spaces. According to your um, chart, the next three bytes is for the file extension. Next three bytes over. The extension is txt, ASCII t, ASCII x, ASCII t. Had I only put a two-character um, two extension, it would have padded that one with a space as well. FAT12 being the oldest versions of FAT used with DOS, does not allow long file names. If it does, it has to work it around it and have the files take on more than one entry. Um, it's made for only eight character file names because there's only eight bytes reserved in the directory table for the file name. The next byte over is the attribute byte. One byte to store whether or not that file is read-only, whether it's hidden, whether it's a directory, whether it's a volume label, what? All of that stored in one byte. How does it do that? Well, each bit means something in the attribute byte. And the coding for the attribute byte is going to be, you have eight bits per byte, bit number zero, bit number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven for all eight bits. Each bit means something. Bit zero means yes or no, is it read only? Bit one means yes or no, hidden. Bit two is the system file um, art attribute. Bit three, is it a volume label? Bit four, is it a directory, a subdirectory, I should say, actually. And bit five, is the file's archive bit set? FAT12 does not use the last two bits. So I take this archive byte that's displayed to me in hex, I need to convert that to binary. Two zero in hex is in binary. Now I look to see where do I have ones, and that will be the attribute that's set. Only one attribute is set for one.txt, the archive bit. This file is ready for archive, meaning it's never been backed up by a backup program. It is not a read-only file or hidden or anything like that. In the next section, we will look at the rest of the root directory table, starting with the file size and the first cluster where the file can be found in the data section, and then we'll look to see how a date and time can be parsed.